Welcome to part two of your networking tutorial for GameMaker Studio 2. So glad you're watching this. If you haven't watched part one, you can look in the description. You'll find a link for that. We're going to continue where we left off in the last video. Uh, in this video, we're going to um, basically see how we can send information to all the clients that are connected rather than how we have it now. Basically, the client sends information to the server. The server sends information right back to the same client. Uh, it doesn't communicate with all the clients, so we need that to happen. Um, in this example, let me erase all of this. So, uh, as you can see, we have a server, we have four clients. Currently, how our system is, uh, this client, let's say client number one, sends data to the server, and the server sends data right back to that client, and these other three don't know what's going on. How we want to make it in this video is client number one or whichever client sends info to the server. The server then sends information to all of the clients that are connected. That way everybody's on the same page. So if let's say client number two jumped, then it would tell the server, hey, I just jumped. The server would then tell all of the clients that client number two jumped. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. First, we're going to need a way to move our X and Y position. We're not gonna to get totally into walking in this video, uh, cause that's a whole nother fun thing to make, but we are going to <clears throat> uh, change up our script a little bit. The first thing we're gonna create is in our client under con under slash client object in the create event. We're gonna create an enumerator, that way we can keep all of our code nice and neat uh, and understandable. So enum, E-N-U-M, and we'll call it network. And in brackets, we'll just say um, move. So if you don't know about enumerators, basically uh, whenever we say from now on network period move, that will be equal to the value of zero. Uh, if we added more enumerators like um, jump or chat or uh, change under slash outfit, um, basically the value will increment or increase by one uh, every line. So move is equal to zero, jump would be equal to one, chat equal to two, change outfit equal to three. Now I know there's four, however, it always starts with zero. So move is zero, jump is one, chat is two, change outfit would be uh, three. And you just separate these by com commas, except the very last one does not need a comma, unless you want it there, or if you're gonna add a new one. So, uh, so again, to access these numbers, you just say like network period jump, <coughs> excuse me. So we don't need all these other ones right now, so we're just gonna use move and um, Let's go ahead and change a few things that we have going right now. Um, so in our receive packet, uh, basically we have this case one. Uh, we're gonna change this to network.move, which again is equal to the value of zero. So remember in the last video, um, we were just changing our sprite index. Well, we're gonna delete that here in a second. We need to make the same enumerator in the server. So go ahead and open up the server in your Game Maker Studio 2 under create event of your con under slash server, make the same enumerator. And these have to match perfectly, okay? Especially when you start adding more stuff. So network move. Okay, then we're gonna to go to our receive packet script, change case one to network.move. And we're gonna change all this code in just a moment. All right, so currently we have it to where whenever we click space in our object player in the client, it would send this value of one to the server. Now that one would go to the server and it would be picked up right here, message ID. And then the message ID would go into a script, switch message ID, and then it would find the case for that. So we started at one last time. Well, now we don't even have that at all. Number one is not a case at all because we just change it to network move. Um, but again, the first piece of data you write in your buffer will always be that message ID. So that's the basically the script you're gonna run. So um, 
basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna copy this code, okay? Actually, we can just do this. Key press space, let's change this event to mouse global left pressed. So whenever we click the left mouse button, we're gonna send data to the server. And we're gonna change this number one of the buffer U8 to network period move. So all that's happening right now is uh, whenever we click the left mouse button somewhere in the world, it's going to start the buffer from the top. It's gonna to write network move, which is of the value of zero <clears throat> to the buffer. It's gonna send that network packet to the server. The server is gonna grab it in the message ID, boom, right here. And it's gonna run this code, which we're gonna change all this code in a second. Now, basically, we're saying it's network move, which we're gonna move our character, but it, uh, it doesn't know what we're trying to do. It just says, okay, move, but where do you wanna move it? <coughs> so we need to send the X and the Y of where we wanna move. So let's write buffer, right? Under our network move. Con client dot client buffer buffer now for x and y you normally want to do a u16 okay so there are different types of buffers and you can use the middle mouse button to click this and see the different types of buffers buffer u8 allows you to assign a number in that buffer between 0 and 255 buffer u16 allows you to assign a number between the value of 0 and 65000 so an x and y you're probably not going to have a room this small and you're probably not going to have a room this big an x of 65,000 would be a huge room 255 would be pretty small so u16 is safe but just know that a buffer u16 if you use it for many different reasons you'll use it but you can't do a, a negative number with a u16 okay so just know you can't go into the negative it's just from 0 to 65,000 if you want to do negative you need to do a, a s16 or an S8, if you, you know. So that's how you get to negative numbers. Okay, let's close that. So buffer write con client, client buffer, which is the variable of our buffer that we made. Type U16, and then we're just gonna say mouse X. So we're sending the mouse X. So basically we're gonna say wherever we click, we want our player to go there. Uh, and then we wanna do the same thing, but for our Y. Client buffer, buffer u16, and then mouse y, bam, okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now, uh, currently as it stands, uh, basically if we ran this, we're sending our mouse x and mouse y, nothing's gonna happen. So if we go ahead and click F5 on both of our projects, it's gonna launch both of these things. So here's our server right here, here's our client. If we click somewhere, Nothing's going to happen. Yes, we are sending our mouse X and mouse Y. The server doesn't know what the heck to do with that. It's not even reading that information until we tell it to. Let's go ahead and open up our server. Let's open up our room server and change the background color just so we can better tell the difference between these guys. Turn it to green. Close that. Okay, let's open up our receive packet script. And we've already changed this case to network move. And... Um, Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a couple pieces of information. So these are the three pieces of information in our client that we're sending. We're sending a buffer U8, network move. We're sending our mouse X, our mouse Y. That's three pieces of data. If we go to our server, we are only picking up one piece of data, and that's that, that buffer U8, that's that network move. So we need to pick up those next two pieces of data. How do we do that? By just creating variables. So we'll say var move x equals buffer read buffer buffer u16. And for the y, we'll say move, um, by the way, how do I do it? I'm sorry, I'll make that text bigger for you guys. Uh, var move at y equals buffer read buffer buffer u16 u16 okay all right so now we have grabbed our 
uh, two pieces of data that the client sent. We've grabbed our X and we've grabbed our Y. Um, and now, still nothing's going to happen until we send that information back to the client. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just modify this code. We're going to say buffer seek. Okay, this is good. We start from the top of the buffer. We say buffer write, a buffer U8. Now we're going to change this to network move. And then we're going to say buffer right server buffer buffer u16 and then move x and we can just copy and paste that code and then say move y so we're sending this information back to the client so this we get the x we get the y of the buffer and then we just send that sucker right back to our socket which is the socket that sent it. So we haven't sent it to all the clients yet, but we're getting there, okay? So let's go ahead and open up our receive packets script in our client. And under network move, just delete whatever we had it in there. And we're kind of going to do the same thing. So again, in our server, the first thing we sent was this buffer U8 network move. Well, it goes back to the receive packets of our client. What's the first piece of information we grab in our buffer? buffer read buffer u8 our message id network move it's going to run the script <coughs> so we basically do the same thing var move under slash x equals buffer read buffer buffer u16 buffer u16 and we can literally just copy and paste that and just change this variable name to move y now we have basically sent our X and Y to the server and the server sent that information back to the client and then we can just say uh, object player dot X um, yep equals move X and then we can say object player dot Y equals move Y and that will move our object player to where it needs to be so Let's go ahead and run our client, and then we'll run our server. Okay, so here's our server. It's online. Here's our client, and now we can move. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? How excited are you? Now, what's cool is this is not being done on the client side. Now, look, if we close the server, let's shut down the server. When we click in the game world, Nothing is happening. Why? Because it's sending information to the server and the server is not telling that client to move. It's totally disconnected from the, uh, from the server. Boom. Okay, so I know I said in this video we were going to make it to where we send data to all the clients. However, we're already 13 minutes in, so I'm going to push that into part three. But what we did was just very important because we need to be able to move around the game world for what we're about to do so the next video we're going to talk about logging in multiple clients and uh, how they can see each other because right now if we connected two clients um, nothing's gonna happen really <clears throat> let me go ahead and create an executable as a zip uh, let's put that in on my desktop yep replace it so right now if we uh, run two clients which is what we're gonna do Really quick, uh, let's uh, see, I'm on my other monitor here. Let me just pull this up real quick like client. Yep, there we go. Okay, so if we launch our server and then we open up two clients, which we'll do here now. So here's client number one. So let's just move him to the right. Now, if we open up another client, okay, we are both connected to the server. However, these clients do not see each other. So I'm moving, the client doesn't see, we're both connected to the same server, but we cannot see each other. So in the next video, we'll make it to where we can actually see each other and then uh, be able to interact. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and a comment if this is helping. Uh, it really helps me to know that people are watching these. That way I can, you know, kind of encourages me to keep uploading. If you're not already, follow me on Twitter. I'm making an HTML5 MMORPG. So if you want to see the power of what I'm teaching you and what it can do, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash wizardy, wizardy.com, and uh, I'll see you guys next video.